Hello, my name is Afredi Salmon Mwijage from Edgar, Tanzania. Welcome in this session which is concerning with history from 5, the, the topic number 3, the topic number 6. So this is called the influence of external forces and the lives of nationalism in Africa. So in the last session we ended on looking, the, on, on looking to the internal forces or internal factors for the lives of African nationalism. So now we are going to see the external factor for the lives of African nationalism. The, the lives of African nationalism was also influenced by the global situation. There were forces operating from outside Africa which played a big role in the lives of African nationalism. So we can see that the, apart from the internal factors that led to the lives of African nationalism, there were also external forces that driven or triggered to the lives of African nationalism. The first one was the role of the United Nations. The role of United Nations. The end of the end of, first, of Second World War led to the formation of international organizations like United Nations, like United Nations, which was against all forms of exploitation and colonialism in different parts of the world. And this organ was played the great role in the independence struggle in different parts of Africa because this body helped different colonies to regain back their independence and might of colonialism in different parts of Africa because it was a destructive and a distance for the development in Africa. So in one way or another, apart from the UN, apart from that, UN has ordered or had ordered some colonial powers to prepare the territory to the independence. Example, Britain was given Tanganyika and ordered to prepare the territory under until it become capable to be independent. So you can see that how United Nations was helped or played a great role to the lives of African nationalism, whereby you know or formation of international organizations like you know were against the oppression and exploitation by the colonialists. So that's why after the formation of UN led to the lives of nationalism, for example, in Tanganyika, whereby Britain was ordered, or British colony, British rulers were ordered to pre prepare Tanganyika for being, to prepare Tanganyika until when she will become, or she will want to get, or to gain her independence, to, to establish or to form the self-rule. Another was was the Pan-Africanism movement. The Pan-Africanism movement. This movement was formed in the United States of America by the black people in the diaspora. The main goal of the movement was to fight for the abolition of slave trade and slavery. But after the abolition of slave trade, it turned into a liberation movement whereby it advocated for nationalism. To me that the Pan-Africanism movement was aimed at uniting all people of African origin in order to liberate themselves from colonialism and the slave trade as well as slavery in the New World and people who found in Africa. So the movement argued that Africans, Africa was Africa. After the independence of Ghana in 1957, that Pan-Africanism movement shifted its headquarters to Accra where it is peers added the independence of many African countries. So you can see how Pan-African movement led to the lives of African nationalism in many countries. But the another external factor for the lives of African nationalism was the lives of the United States of America. It means that the lives of the United States of America was led or played a great role to the lives of African nationalism, whereby the United States of America provided the moral and financial support to the African countries with the main aim of spreading an ideology of capitalism in African countries. So that was, that was USA who 
USA took the part of Britain, USA had no colonies in Africa and from there it needed areas for getting raw materials, markets and other for investment. To get their colonies, she had to encourage the so-called open door policy, where she encouraged other European countries to grant independence for their colonies. So you can see USA, because of, uh, of having no colonies in Africa, used that policy of open door policy to force the European countries to grant the independence for African countries because she wanted to gain the area for investment, area for low materials and area for markets which were for markets of their manufactured goods. So you can see the European countries as they were seeking assistance from USA were were freely were freely accepted to grant independence in African countries. So much more USA adapted capitalism ideology to ensure such ideology spread through the world. She decided to support the nationalism or decolonization movement as the best way to make the expansionism and the spread of the idea of the capitalism in African countries. So you can see how USA in one way or another played a great role to the lives of African nationalism with the main aim of spreading an ideology of capitalism. But the another on the end as the external factor for the life of African nationalism was the role of United Soviet Socialist Republic or USSR. It means that the Second World War ended with the lives of socialist and the USSR was making a step towards the industrial development. Hence demanded area for the economic motives like area for raw materials, market capital investments, this mainly United Soviet Socialist Republic to support the African countries morally and financially so that they can get those areas after being, being free from colonization. So the USCCR were supporting the African countries with the other aim in the other end of spreading a ideology which is known as socialist ideology. So in one way or another, the, the lives of nationalism in Africa gained momentum because of the presence of United Socialist, Soviet Socialist Republic or USCR. The another, another, another role of oh, the, the, the another external factor for the lives of nationalism was the role of non-allied movement or NAM. It means that the non-allied movement which was held or which was conducted, I mean which was formed during the Bandu conference in 1955 in, in Indonesia, Bandu, whereby that conference was attended or, or was, was, was held or was that conference was attended by different leaders from different countries which were neither supporting capitalists nor supporting socialists. So those countries, those countries provided the different ideas and the techniques which could be used by the African countries to, to, to eliminate the colonialists from their countries. For example, Mahatma Gans, the president of India, were attending that conference. So that leader of that president of India, Mahatma Gandhi, were, were helped so much the African countries on getting the techniques and methods which could be used in the struggle for their independence. Another was the role of ex-soldiers. The role of ex-soldiers. It means that I, I didn't like it. So the another external force was the role of ex-soldiers. It means that after the returning of the African African soldiers from the war, from the Second World War and the First World War, they come up with different techniques and methods which could be used to fight the colonialists by using the armed struggle after the failure of the peace means. So the those ex-soldiers like the Dante Marshall of Kenya were the one who organized the fellow Kenyans and 
people of Kenya to fight against the British rule in Kenya and to attain their independence in 1962. I mean, in So that was the external forces that led to the rise of African nationalism. So here we have to see, we have to see the forces, the forms of of nationalism. Forms of nationalism. So we are going to see the forms of nationalism through studying the case study. We are going to study with Ghana nationalism and the case study of peaceful method. The peaceful method. So you can see that Ghana was attaining our independence through peaceful method. And peaceful method or constitution method was the type of method which were used by the African countries to attain their independence through peaceful or negotiations by the colonial masters. So you can see that the peaceful method. It means that the peaceful method or constitution method we are used by the African countries like Tanganyika, Ghana and other countries to attain their independence peacefully. So by looking Ghana nationalism as the case study, it means that Ghana was one of the African countries that attained independence by the use of peaceful method or constitutional method. Ghana was initially called the Gold Coast. It means that by that time Ghana was called the Gold Coast. So in 1946, the British colonial government introduced the what was called the Zebrans Constitution. Although this constitution provided for an African majority in the Legislative Council, it had two main weaknesses. The Legislative Council was merely advisory and it did not have deliberative vote. The decisions were made by the British officers and not given the chance to the Africans to make the or Ghana to make the decisions. Also, the second weakness of that legislative, legislative council was it, it is, its representative were very limited because out of the 18, 13 were chiefs who were selected by their fellow chiefs who were supporters of the colonial systems. So, after looking that the bans allowed frustrating among the Africans in Ghana, especially Allies. As a result, they formed a nationalistic movement known as the United Gold Coast Convention or UGCC in 1945 under the leadership, leadership of S.B. Dankwa and Kwame Nkrumah was the secretary of that, of that, that movement or that association. The UGCC organized numerous attacks to the colonial government. This forced the it to make the another constitution known as the coast coast constitution that we are guiding that association this constitution proved for more elected members in the legislative council it means the formation of that council in ghana made the colonialists to accept the ghana to 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 elect members who could form the legislative council but in addition, 8 out of 11 cabinet posts were to be held by Africans. And the additional 8 of 11 cabinet posts were to be held by Africans. The new constitution seemed to have praised some of the members of UGCC, but the, radic but the radical ones, e.g. Kwame Nkrumah, broke away from the UGCC and formed another nationalist movement known as the Convectional People's Party. CPP in 1947 and the CPP C CPP not CAP CPP it means that the CPP are the two powerful slogans known as seek first the political kingdom and all things will be added into into it and the another Another slogan was, was self-governance, the self-governance now, 
The CPP was advocating for complete independence and not changes in the colonialism. To mean that the CPP or Convention of People's Party was addressing or advocating for the complete independence for among the Ghana or Ghanaians. There was a political movement known as the National Liberation Movement or NELM that was formed to challenge CPPP. CPP. The reason after there, let us see the reasons for the successful independence struggle in Ghana. The successful the successful reasons or reasons for the successful independence struggle in Ghana. There are various factors that account for a successful independence in Ghana. It, it is the one of the first African countries to attain independence. So Ghana was regarded as the first independence in Africa to attain independence in Africa. So Ghana attained its independence in 1957. What were the factors that made Ghana to attain the independence through peace means and to be the first nation in Africa to attain their independence. The first one was absence of tribalism. There was absence of tribalism in Ghana whereby the political party, Convention of People's Party, was not associated with any major tribe in Ghana. The absence of tribalism made it possible for the nationalists to get enough support that was needed to the presence of common front against the colonial governments. It means that the nation of Ghana had no tribalism or tribes conflicts which were which could act as a setback or obstacle during the struggle for the independence. So the people of Ghana were provided the full cooperation to the to the efforts of demanding or struggling for the independence in that nation. So that's why Ghana successfully to get their independence early in Africa and through the peaceful way. The another was a strong leadership strong leadership in Ghana. It means that the it means Ghana had the strong leadership. Strong leadership strong leadership is the one of the factor that enabled Ghana to acquire our independence earlier than many African countries. Kwame Nkrumah was a strong leader who was able to unite all of Africans in Ghana and fight for one common cause that is independence. It means that the strong leadership of Kwame Nkrumah was the was the the main factor that made the Ghana or the Africans in Ghana to be united under the under the mobilization of their leader Kwame Nkrumah and to struggle for the one motive which was so-called the independence of Ghana as they come up with various slogans like the the time for independence. The another was clear policies to mean that Ghana had the clear policies. The Convention People's Party that fought for Ghana independence had the clear policies and elaborate programs. To mean that the political party that was introduced or formed in Ghana under the leadership of Kwame Nkrumah had the clear policies and the programs that were well elaborated. And the party advocated for better po for better prices for peasant products, high wages to African workers, and getting ready to getting ready of colonial rule. So the political party advocated for providing the providing the better price for peasant 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 products, but high wages to the African or Ghana workers, Ghanaian workers and getting ready of colonial rule. So that's why this impressive, this was impressive idea managed to get support of the people in the struggle for independence. So the elaborated policies and the programs under the, under the conventional party, uh, under the conventional people's party of Ghana made or got or managed to get the support of the people of the majority of Ghana in the whole process of struggling for the independence. But the another was common language. Ghana had the common language which was used in the struggle for independence. 
Ghana use the English language as their common language whereby the leader of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah, used the language of English to mobilize and unite all the people of Ghana to fight for their independence. So the use of English as the common language helped lead to the independence struggle in Ghana. This language was known to almost all the people in Ghana, hence they become aware about the objectives of the Ghanaian nationalists and gave them the much needed support against the colonial government. It means that the whole people of Ghana, or the entire, the, 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 the majority of people of Ghana were known, were knowing the, or were understanding the language of English. So it was easy to understand the objectives and goals of the Ghanaian nationalists and those majority of Ghana provide the full and and much needed support to the whole process of struggling for the independence and that's why Ghana get the independence area than other African countries and through peaceful way. But another was absence of many white settlers to mean that in Ghana there were no there were no many white settlers that were settling in that country. The British had established a peasant economy that they did not invest every. So you can see that Ghana was the country in Africa that was or oh, that had no many settlers who, who, could, who could invest every in the in that country. The absence of many white settlers made it easy for the British to grant independence to Ghana because they were they had no many investment in that country. So for for granting the independence among the Ghanaians was easy thing because they had nothing to lose. So that made Ghana to successfully attaining their independence earlier and through the use of peaceful method. But another one was good transport system. It means that Ghana had the good transport system that were left by the colonials or that were established by the colonials. Ghana had a relatively good transport system which was helped by the small nature of the country. The transport system made it possible for the nationalists to move around the country campaigning to overthrow the colonial regime. It means that the transport system which were present in Ghana were used by the colonialists to move from one place to another, preaching the goals and the objectives of the of their of, of the of, of the preaching their goals and objectives toward the majority of Ghana and to seek to seek for the support towards the overthrowing the existing colonial regimes in, in Ghana. So that's why the nationalists attained the much needed support towards the struggling for the independence. Hence the successful attainance of independence in Ghana in 1957. Another reason for the successful independence in Ghana was popularity of CPP or conviction Conventional People's Party under uh, Kwame Nkrumah. The CPP was very popular in Ghana. The party had a great support from the cocoa growers and the peasants, and they were the ones who made up the biggest part of the population. It means that the CPP was a popular political party in Ghana, and it had got the much support from the the cocoa growers and the peasants in Ghana that. The, that the political party which are the, the high population who were in Ghana. So the party became so popular that in the 1951 elections it won 33 seats, 33 seats against the three of UGCC. Following this result government and in 1952 it became the Gold Coast first Prime Minister on March of 6, 1977, the Gold Coast became independent taking the name of the ancient Ghana Empire. And in July 1960, Ghana became Republic with Kwame Nkrumah as the first president. So you can see the various stages whereby the 1951, the first election, 
was done and Ghana or I mean CPPP CPP was won almost 33 seats and following that that in 1952 52 the that Ghana become the goal it means the Kwame Gulma become the gold coast first prime minister and on March 6th, 1957, the Gold Coast became the independence and, and taking the name of the ancient Ghana Empire to be called Ghana. And the, in, in July 1960, Ghana became the republic with the president or the first president, so called Kwame Nkrumah. So these were the, the reasons, but another was external forces were highly contributed to the attainment of, of independence of Ghana. It, it means that external forces such as the United Nations organizations, the likes of USCLR and the likes of USA contributed greatly to the independence of Ghana. It means those, those external forces like the likes of USCLR the United States of America and the United Nations played a great role to the to the lies or to the struggling for the independence of Ghana. The UN put pressure on Britain to grant independence to Ghana. It means that the UN pressed or put pressure on Britain to grant the independence to the Ghana or to Ghana. And the USCLR Pretty to the assets and all African countries in their struggle for independence. As you can see that USCLR were providing moral and the material support to the to the African countries in order to decolonize to, 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 to support to, to struggle for decolonization processes in, in their countries. So let us see the role of Ghana to African nationalism. What were the role of Ghana independence to the African nationalism? The independence of Ghana in 1957 marked the turning point in Africa. It played a great role in assuring the rest of the continent is liberated from colonial rule. And this cause was led by Kwame Nkrumah. It means that after the attainment of the, of the independence in Ghana, Ghana acted as the turning point in Africa that played a great role to provide to provide the various support to the less African countries to attain their independence and that support was led by Kwame Nkrumah as was become the first president of Ghana so let us see the roles of Ghana towards the Less the African countries to attain their independence. The first one was inspiration. It means that Ghana was inspired other African countries to struggle and and they demand their independence from the colonial rule. It means that the independence of Ghana in 1957 inspired many African countries to fight for their independence as well. Kwame Nkrumah acted as the limelight to other African states that were still under the colonial regime to fight for their independence. And this was one of the reasons that encouraged the African to use armed struggle so as to attain their independence. It means that this made the, some African countries like Angola, Kenya, and Msumbi, that Angola, Kenya, and other Portuguese colonies to wait on armed struggle after the failure of peaceful way for the uh, for the struggle of independence. Another was material support. It means that Ghana provided the material support to the other African countries in uh, struggling for their independence. As Ghana and Kwame Nkrumah provided financial support to the most of the nationalistic movements in Africa that we are fighting for independence. It means that. Kwame Nkrumah were providing the, the material support to the nationalist, nationalist movement in Africa that were fighting for the independence in their countries. The financial and moral support given by Nkrumah inspired many African countries to fight against colonial rule. It means that 
after means after after African countries experiencing financial and more support I mean material and more support from Ghana they get inspired by that action and the African countries proceeded to fight against the colonial rule in order to attain their self rule or independence another the headquarters of the pan-african movement shifted from shifted shifted to it means shifted shifted from from the afro-asian countries to ghana following the independence of ghana in 1957 accra the capital city of ghana became the headquarters of the pan-african movement it means that ghana acted at the center or any quarter of supporting African countries to attain their independence and the early quarters of Pan-Africanism was shifted to Accra, the capital city of Ghana. The, the Pan-African movement played a significant role in the independence of Ghana. In 1958, all independent states such as Libya, Egypt, Ethiopia, Morocco, Tunisia and Ghana met in Ankara where they laid strategies on how to help other African countries to attain independence. So you can see that Ghana was acted as the center for, for setting strategies on how to help other African countries to attain their independence. As in 1958, the independent states like Morocco, Libya, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Tunisia were met in Accra in order to set some strategies which could be helped in the supporting the African countries to fight against the colonial rule. But another was encouraged the African unit. It means that Ghana encouraged the African nations to encourage unit among themselves. Kwame Nkrumah contributed to the independence of many African countries by encouraging unity in the continent. It means that Kwame Nkrumah was encouraging unit in the whole continent. He convened a meeting for all African state unions in 1959 with the aim to unite all African states into a confederation. African unit was the crucial factor if African was to succeed against the colonial rule. It means that the unit was seen to be the crucial factor that could bring the Africans together to fight the, against the colonial rule and to attain the lost independence from the colonialists. So that was another, that was another role of played by Ghana towards the last African country to get their independence. But the fifth one was put pressure on France. Kwame Nkrumah exerted a lot of pressure on France to grant independence to Algeria. In 1959 to 1960, a team of delegates from Africa, Britain and America went to monitor the situation in Algeria. It was Nkrumah who took initiative of such a visit. And Ghana also pressurized the French and and are dominate and are dominated in West Africa. It means that Ghana provides the much pressure to the French or French French rulers in order to grant the independence in Algeria. And Ghana was initiative to form a team of delegates who were gone who were who were going in Algeria to 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 ensure that the the French are granting the independence of the Algerians. So that was another law of, of Ghana towards the independence of African states. But the another was the law of Radio Ghana. It means the Radio Ghana played a great role in the struggle for independence. It became the mouthpiece of African nationalist movements to air out their feelings towards the colonial government's exploitation and oppression. Broadcasting on the radio led to the massive support for the nationalist boss in and outside the Africa. It means that the radio Ghana was played a great role in the struggle of African continent independence, whereby the radio Ghana were, uh, uh, were broadcasting the, and voice up the voice of African countries on, on, one, on, on demanding or 
struggling for their self-rule or for their independence and that broadcasting were reaching out and in inside Africa so the African countries were got the assistance on the on the assistance of the Lady of Ghana because the voice of African countries were literally outside the Africa and that's why African countries got the assistance from abroad. That was another role of Ghana towards the, the attainment of African countries. And the last one was Ghana became the model. Ghana and Ankuruma became the model for all African countries to emulate colonialism. Nkuluma once said that if he could, he, he would have delayed the independence of Ghana until a time when other African, country, African countries are independent. The position of Ghana encouraged many African countries to struggle for independence. It means that the, the, of the independence of Ghana played as a model for the African countries or for the less African countries to fight themselves until they got the their independence because Ghana was if 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 she could not if she could not fight against the colonial rule to attain their independence and it, it means that Ghana could could also could also delay to attain their independence but being attained their independence earlier than other African countries that was acted as the model for African countries that were still dominated by the colonial masters to fight against the colonial rule and to, to struggle for their independence. So this is the end of our lesson. I would like to give you the exercise which has, which has one question. And, and that question is, is that explaining the reasons of struggle for Ghana independence. And the second one is what you are the law of Ghana towards towards the best African countries independence So this is the exercise which you have to perform. The first question is explain the reasons of struggle for Ghana independence. And the second one is what were the role of Ghana towards the last African countries independence. So until there I would like to wind up our lesson. So this is the end of our today's lesson. I wish we will meet on the next session. And I wish you the good time and good preparation. Have a good time. Bye-bye.